Hey there! In this series of videos we're going to be looking at the primitive, recursive and partial recursive sets of functions as they relate to computability theory. We're going to introduce these three basic functions and a few building blocks for composing functions together composition, primitive recursion and minimization. The result is going to be that we'll be able to build the set of partial recursive functions. Uh, now what's really cool about this set of functions is that it happens to be the set of every computable function over the natural numbers. Now what do I mean by computable? By that I mean that there exists an algorithm that we could give to a computer that would compute this function. That means we could give the computer the input and the computer would run the algorithm and it would give us the output. Now that computer might be uh, your phone, it might be a laptop, it might be you sitting at a desk with an infinite amount of pen and paper. The important thing is that there is a thing that can run this algorithm that we can give it the input, it will give us the output of the function. Over this series we're going to look at what functions are, we're going to look at the basic functions that I mentioned and those three ways of composing functions. Composition, primitive recursion and minimization. We'll start today with what is a function and in particular we're going to define the domain of a function, the codomain of a function and we're going to define these terms total functions and partial functions. So we'll start with the example of integer multiplication. This here is our black box integer multiplier. I'm going to give it some inputs. I'll give it 3, 4 and our multiplier is going to give us back 12. I'll give it 6, 2 and our multiplier is going to give us back 12. Or I could give it 0, 5 say and it will give us back uh, of course 0. So what's going on here, so we're giving uh, our multiplier pairs of integers and, and it's giving us back integers. So the type of thing that we feed into the function, the type of input to the function is what we call the domain. And the type of thing that it gives us back in return as output is what we call the codomain, sometimes called the range. Uh, so as a bit of notation, we say that this uh, script Z means the set of all integers. And we denote pairs of integers by Z with a superscript 2. And yeah, so we denote, denote integers with um, a just this Z again. So now we have the domain and the codomain being this and this. And we use this notation malt is a function from this to this. Okay, and that's the notation that I want us to get used to. Um, in particular, this arrow here in the middle means that malt is a total function. That means that anything in malt's domain, if we feed that to malt as input, then it will have something to give us as output from its codomain. Uh, so I could try to trick malt, I could try to give it a tricky one, uh, like minus one, minus one, but malt is super clever and still knows how to respond. In particular, it gives us one. Um, so there is no uh, pair of integers that I could give malt such that there wouldn't be uh, an answer that it could give us. And this is what we call a total function. We'll contrast this to integer division. So what is integer division, just quickly? So um, integer division, let's say 8 div 2 is 4 because 8 divided by 2 is 4. And 8 div, say, 3 equals, well, 8 divided by 3 is what? It's 2 and 2 thirds. So I'm going to say integer division just takes the integer part of that. So 8 div 3 uh, will define to be 2. Okay, so, so that's what integer division is, just in case that wasn't clear. So uh, I could give our integer divider here some input. So let's give it the input 8, 2. And as we know, that's going to give us back 4. I could give it uh, 8, 3. And again, that's going to give us back 2. 
Um, so we might be tempted to say right now, well, okay, so we're giving it pairs of integers and we're getting back integers. So div is a function from pairs of integers to integers. The only trouble with that is this arrow here, which says that this is a total function when actually it's not. So of course we could give div uh, a pair of integers, say five, zero, and div would say, well, what would we expect the answer to that to be? Five divided by zero is undefined, right? So actually div doesn't know what to say here. So this is not actually true. It's not actually a total function from pairs of integers to integers. And the way we usually denote this is this kind of half arrow, and we call these partial functions. So this is when there is an input in its domain that we could give to it such that there is nothing in its codomain that it could give us back. So that's what a partial function is, and that's all I had to say about what functions are.